Hi, in today's video, I want to give you a high level overview of all the ways that you can use Angular custom components to customize the look and feel of AG Grid. The full list of components that you can customize are listed on our documentation. So we've got cell renderers, cell editors, date components, you've got your filters, headers, loading cell renderers, tool tips. As you can see, there is a very long list of ways that you can customize AG Grid. And we're just going to take a high level overview of how you would do this. To demonstrate how to use your Angular components in an AG Grid application, we have this simple app which lists Olympic medal winners. And we'll use this to show how many different ways you can use components. Now, the first step will be to create our own custom component. And we're going to use the CLI to do this for us. So let's open up our terminal and we we'll do ng, g for generate, c for component, and then we're going to inline styles and template. And now let's open up our component. Now, the first thing to do is to have your component implement our AG Grid interface. So for example, for a cell renderer, that would be I cell renderer angular comp. And then we need to implement that. For now, we're not going to implement these methods and just return the basic values. For the full details on how to implement a cell renderer, see the previous video on cell renderers. So now we have an empty component that implements our AG Grid interface. And the next thing we do is we can pass it to our grid. To pass it to the grid, you use the column property cell renderer. So you write cell renderer and pass it the name of the component. Hit save, and then we can see our grid is now using our custom component. You can see here, everything says my custom component. Now, once again, this isn't how you would implement an actual cell renderer unless you did want everything to look the same. Now that we have this component, we can actually use it in other places in the grid. For example, on the age column, we could set it as a header component. And then we can see that my custom works appears in the header. We could also set it as a filter component for the country column. And then when you open up the country filter dialog, you see my custom works. Now, again, this isn't what you would actually do, but it gives you the idea of there's all these properties and you can pass them an angular component. To actually make your components useful, you'll be wanting to customize them based on either the cell data that they're showing or some other information provided by the grid. The way that you access that information will be via a parameters object. If we go back to our custom component, you can see that the method agonit receive this parameters object. And in our case, we were using iCellRenderer params, and we can see all the properties that are available to us on that interface. So you've got a value, a formatted value, and lots of information about how the column is being used, whether it's pinned, you've got access to the full data for that row and the column definition. So there's a lot of information you can extract from the parameters. Now, if we come back to our component, you will want to use a different interface depending on which parts of the grid you're supplying your component to. So this was a cell renderer, but if we come to this interface file, we can see we have interfaces for all the other locations that you might use an Angular component. For example, we've got an iHeader Angular comp. So use that interface when you're providing a custom header component. We've got floating filter, date Angular component. So make sure you pick the right one depending on your use case. Why this is important is because they each receive a different parameters object. For example, iHeader params receives a different set of information to enable you to customize your header. So we have a display name, whether sorting has been enabled and whether the menu should be enabled. As you will see, the parameters are specific to where your component is going to be used. This is why it's vital that when you implement your custom component, you pick the right interface. As a quick example, let's change our custom component to be a header component. So we'll update the interface to be iHeader Angular Comp. And as you can see, we now need to change the parameters to be iHeader params. So by using the correct interface, you'll automatically get the correct parameters object based on our TypeScript definitions. As well as the parameters provided by the grid, it's also possible for you to pass custom parameters to your components. To show how we can do this, we will now pass a name parameter to our custom component. So let's first create a property called name on our component. And then in our agnet method, we are going to extract name from the params object. But what you can see here is that we've got a type error saying that the property name doesn't exist on iHeaderParam. And this is true because it's a custom property. 
So what we need to do is create our own My Params interface. On that interface, we can define all the custom parameters that we want to pass to our component. And then if we combine the types of iHeader params and My Params, we will see that the compile error goes away. This is how you can add type safety to your custom parameters object. Now that we have assigned this name value, let's set it in our component so that we can see it working. As you can see, it's not displayed yet. So we need to go back to our app component file and we will pass in the parameters object here. Now the way that you pass custom parameters to a component is via the params object. And there is a corresponding params object for every custom component. So let's add our params to each of the components that we have set up. For cell renderer, that will be cell renderer params. For header component, that is header component params. And for filter, it's filter params. So you can see the pattern here. Whenever you provide a custom component, you can provide your own parameters to it via the same name, but with params. We can now see in our application that we have cell, header, and if we open the filter, we have filter. So we can see our custom parameters are being passed through to the component. And if we wanted to improve the type safety here, we can cast this as my params. And that will help us have auto completion on our parameters object. So now we've seen how we can provide a custom component to our cell renderers, our header components. And we've also seen how to parameterize them with our own custom parameters. But another way that we can dynamically choose what to render as a component is via a selector. So for example, for the cell renderer, there is a property called cell renderer selector. And this takes a method that will return which component and which parameters you want to use. To demonstrate how the selector works, I've created two renderers. So these should look familiar. We have a hello component, which says hello to the name. And again, the name will be passed in via custom parameters. And we have a goodbye component, which does the same thing. Now, if we come back to our app component, First of all, we can remove the cell renderer because we're going to provide it dynamically. And then we add this new property called cell renderer selector. And to this, we provide a callback. This method receives I cell renderer params, which is the same as our custom cell renderer. We will implement this method by examining the age of the athlete and we'll use this to either say hello or goodbye. And we can also supply their name to the parameters. So if we then hit save, we can see our app updates with either hello and the athlete name or goodbye. Hopefully by this point, you're beginning to see a pattern of how these components are configured. For every area of the grid that you can provide a custom component, there are three properties that you can use. There is the component, the params and the selector. On our documentation, you can see this clearly laid out. So for example, for a cell renderer, you have cell renderer and then cell renderer params and cell renderer selector. And again, for cell editor, you'd have cell editor as the component and then params and selector. And the pattern repeats itself for all the other components. So floating filter, floating filters, params. Now the selector is available for all of these properties, but we only document it for cell renderer and cell editor because those are the ones that we think actually make sense for you to use a selector. The next topic that I want to cover in this video might surprise you because I want to show you how you can use plain TypeScript components in your Angular application. And to demonstrate this, I have written a TypeScript cell renderer here. Now, as you can see, greet.ts implements iCellRenderer comp. And this has a different interface. It has a method called init and get GUI as well as the refresh. Now to use our TypeScript component, we do it in the same way. We add a property cell renderer and we pass it greet ts, which is the name of our TypeScript component. And then we also provide the parameters in the same way with cell renderer params. And now if we hit save, we can see our TypeScript component is used for this column. Now you might be wondering, why would you want to do this? If you're using Angular, why not write it in an Angular? And one of the answers for this is that you might want to be able to create custom components that work across applications used in different frameworks. So for example, within one organization, you might have apps which are written in Angular, React, or vanilla JavaScript. And so you can create custom components that are reusable throughout all of those applications. In all our examples so far, we pass our custom components directly to our column definitions. But there is another way that you can register your components with the grid. To do this, you will need to create an object that has a string name mapped to your component. 
So we do that here, we'll add a property called components and you can see we can say the string hello and that will be the hello component and goodbye will reference the goodbye component. Then in our column definitions, we can use those strings instead of passing the real component. So we have set up our component map and use the component name, but you'll notice that our component isn't using the custom cell renderers. And that's because we haven't passed this components object to our grid. So we go into app component.html and we will pass this list of components into the grid. And now if we hit save, you'll see our custom components are now being used again. We've got hello and goodbye. And this is based off the string name matching the property of our components object. The reason why you might want to do this is so that you can make your column definitions serializable to JSON. For example, you might want to store your column definitions on the server and load them dynamically. So far in this video, we've only been talking about providing your own custom components. But AG Grid comes with a vast number of components built in that is possible for you to choose from. To demonstrate this, we're going to configure the filter for our age column. First, let's clear the existing code to make things simpler. By default, the age column filter will use the text, which isn't so good if you want to say, give me everyone who's older than 24. So we can take a look at the AG Grid docs and see that there is a number of inbuilt filters. We have a number filter and a set filter as well as the default text filter. So let's try using the number filter. So if we copy that and now set that as our filter component, hit save. Now, when we go to filter on the age, you'll see we have a greater than and it works with numbers. But then perhaps you'd like to use the enterprise set filter. So once again, if you've got enterprise set up, you can come in and use the set filter. And here we have the enterprise set filter. So not only can you use your own custom components, you can use some of the pre-built components. For the full list, have a look at our documentation under grid provided components. Now, before we finish, let me quickly show you two more enterprise features that you can provide components to. They are a sidebar and also a status bar. And I've added the code in here already for this. So the sidebar will appear on the side of the grid and we'll have columns and filters, which are inbuilt components from AG Grid. And then we'll also provide our hello component as a custom component to that. And also we'll have a status bar, which appears at the bottom of the grid. And again, we show here that we can pass it a hello component and a goodbye component. So we've set these up as properties and then we pass them to our AG Grid component. Hit save, come back to our app. And now we see we have our sidebar with the inbuilt columns and filters components as well as our own custom component. And then if we look down at the bottom of the screen, we have our status bar with hello and goodbye, showing that you can provide custom components here too. And with that, let's bring this video to a close. So in summary, we have shown how you can provide custom components to AG Grid. We've shown how you can use the params options to customize them further, or even use the selector to switch in cell renderers dynamically. We have also shown how you can register components by string values to enable your column definitions to remain JSON serializable. And finally, that you can provide components to the grid, not just to columns. If you've liked this video, let us know in the comments and subscribe so that you can see our next Angular tutorial.